The Impact Wrestling Knockouts division. Now, arguably, it's one of the best women's division in the world right now and has been the case for a long time. It certainly rivals the best female wrestling division out there. It rivals WWE. It certainly betters the likes of AEWs and certainly even all female promotions in the likes of Japan and Stardom. Impact Wrestling's Knockout division is a cornerstone of its product. But what is really interesting and what I wanted to talk about today is the term knockout in general because recently, during an interview with the Spencer Love of Love Wrestling, Impact Wrestling Knockout Champion Diana Prazo did a recent interview and she was asked about various aspects of her current Impact Wrestling run, if it had gone as expected, if things would be different, but she was also asked if she was a fan of the Knockout's name in Impact Wrestling because of course previously in the past other promotions like WWE have used the term Divas to describe their female wrestlers in the past but they've all shifted to just women's division or female wrestlers at this point but not but when it comes to Impact Wrestling they still refer to their female talents as knockouts so what's the situation uh, how does Diana Perazzo the current knockouts champion how does she feel about the term knockout in Impact Wrestling this is what she had to say quote uh, yeah there's been a ton of pushback like right when I started with Impact the knockouts name and I love it I grew up knowing them as knockouts. I never felt a negative connotation towards it as a fan. I just feel like a knockout is beautiful, sexy, is powerful, is strong, is a knockout, literally. I like it, I think it's different. There are, there are other women's divisions and everyone else is a woman and I feel like it gets grouped, to get, grouped in with the diva era. But I think that the connotations and the way that they were, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but the way that they were portrayed is completely different what a diva was and what a knockout was and I think Impact and even when it was TNA developed a really strong women's division by branding them as knockouts and then allowing them to be strong, powerful, sexy, top athletes in their company. I grew up watching divas and I felt like I wanted to change that perception. I'm happy to be a knockout. I'm happy to be the knockouts champion. I'm happy to continue to build that brand with me now. Now, I, must, I agree with her in the sense that there certainly is and was a difference between the Divas in WWE and the Knockouts in Impact Wrestling. Even back when the Knockouts division was first founded, the Diva connotation, I don't think initially by WWE, look, they didn't brand their female wrestlers as Divas as a derogatory term, as we would now probably see it as. They branded it as such because it was a branding opportunity, it was an ability for them to make money, and that's what they wanted to call it. Female pro wrestling has come such a long way in the last five years, let alone the last 10, 15 years when it comes to pro wrestling. And there certainly has always been a difference between divas and knockout. Diva, to me, always felt like a derogatory term. What is the definition of a diva? It's someone that's high maintenance and you also you always hear it outside of pro wrestling as a bit of a derogatory term. Oh, they're a diva. They're high maintenance. They always, you know what I mean? In terms of show business, it's always used as a derogatory term. Knockout, it's nowhere near as bad as being called a diva, right? It isn't It isn't as bad. And quite frankly, look, Diana Perazzo, when it comes to this interview, she's not going to come out and criticise Impact Wrestling. She's not going to criticise the term knockout or the knockouts division. She's the knockouts champion. She's the representative of female wrestling and Impact Wrestling. So she's not going to come out and when she's asked that question, what do you think of the knockouts term? Do you like it? Do you not like it? She's hardly going to come out and say, oh, I hate it. It's terrible. I feel so demeaned and I feel so belittled when I'm referred to as a knockout or the knockout champion she is just isn't going to do that and I understand that the knockouts term when it comes to describing their female women's division has been around a long time and there is certainly a lot to unpick and it would be difficult to drop overnight especially like I said in the same way with the divas in WWE there's branding involved there and to drop that would be difficult for them and it certainly does differentiate the women's division uh, in Impact Wrestling from say the women's division in NXT or WWE or AEW or NWA or Ring of Honor anywhere for that matter. So the Knockouts division certainly is always going to be associated with it, with Impact Wrestling and it's been part of the fabric of Impact Wrestling, TNA Wrestling and a cornerstone of the product for a very long time at this point. But the Knockout name when it was first originated by Impact Wrestling, I don't think you can tell me that they didn't call their, their female wrestlers Knockouts because WWE at the time were calling their, their female superstars Divas. The reason... The reason why Impact used that name or decided to go with that name is because it was a version of the Diva name, right? Knockout doesn't mean the same as Diva, and I'm not saying it does, but I, without a shadow of a doubt, Impact Wrestling, TNA Wrestling, so when the Knockouts division was formed, which was, what, 2007, 2008, around that period of time, 
they were, I don't want to say they were copying WWE because they weren't, but this is a period of time in TNA history where they're bringing in a lot of former WWE stars and a lot of former WWE people running that company or writing that show at the time, whether it is uh, Vince Russo as the head writer at the time. And they obviously looked towards WWE because that's what they wanted to be. They wanted to be WWE during that period of time. They were WWE light. That was a big criticism for TNA wrestling during that period of time. Is it the glory years of Impact Wrestling? Possibly. And it's not to say that the product was bad because it wasn't. But certainly a criticism of Impact Wrestling during that period of time is that they were very much like WWE. And there were certainly aspects that Impact Wrestling, what made it so unique and different during the early days of TNA in sort of 2005, 2006, over the years, they transitioned away from that and became WWE light. And there's no doubt in my mind that uh, when Impact Wrestling were looking to put in a female division way back when, were they just going to call them the women's division? Or did they look at WWE and say, well, WWE has this whole branding of the diva in WWE. Their female superstars are bigger than that because they're called divas. That's the branding they have. If we're going to have a female division in Impact Wrestling, we need to brand them something. We need to use it as a branding opportunity. WWE has divas. We're going to have knockouts. And to me, that's why mainly I think they used that name initially because they wanted to copy WWE. Now, you can disagree with me there and I would be welcome to hear it. You can let me know in the comment section below, but... To me, that's certainly a big factor, I think, at the time is why they decided to go with the Knockouts name. And to me, and even the branding of it, they used to say, you know, they're not women, they're Knockouts. They're, they're, they're almost bigger and better than females. They're not female wrestlers, they're Knockouts. They're bigger and better. It's like WWE differentiating, not calling their wrestlers wrestlers. They're calling them superstars because they're bigger than your average pro wrestler on the independent scene. And it was kind of the same in WWE then. They're not female pro wrestlers, they're divas. And I think Impact Wrestling wanted to do the same thing. They're not female pro wrestlers, they're knockouts. They're bigger, they're smart, sexy, they're powerful, whatever. And despite what Diana Perrazzo says, and despite what some people might think, the term knockout does have a slight connotation to looks and appearance to me. And I was wondering if that was just me, if that was just my perception of it, and it was me being a bit older and uh, knowing what things were like 10, 15 years ago in society and in pro wrestling. And was that just me? Was I, was I reading that wrong? And does it feel slightly outdated in 2021? And I do think it feels slightly outdated in 2021 to be calling female wrestlers knockouts, but I decided to look it up instead. I had a look online. I typed in knockout to Google, saw a definition, a dictionary definition of knockout and an informal use of the word knockout is, quote, an extremely attractive or impressive person or thing. And if you want to use it in a sentence, she must have been a knockout when she was young. So there is a connotation when it comes to the word knockout when it comes to looks of a person. So once again, that does raise the question, in 2021, does the term knockout truly apply to female pro wrestlers? Is it right? Is it right to have a sort of connotation to someone's appearance in how you're describing your female athletes? And I'm not sure there is because the, it does have a connotation to beauty and appearance. And you do have to question with everything that's evolved when it comes to female pro wrestling at this point in 2021, is it really needed? At this point in WWE and Impact Wrestling and in other companies, female wrestlers, especially in Impact Wrestling, Female wrestlers are the cornerstone of the show. They're A lot of the times, they're the main event of the TV show. They're the main event of TV specials like Impact Emergence with the Iron Woman, well, the Iron Man match. Even that, I would prefer it to be called an Iron Woman match. And it goes to the point in WWE, you've had the female's main event pay. You've, you've had a female main event for WrestleMania at this point. And with that being said, in 2021, the progression and the evolution and getting closer, we're not there, we're nowhere near there, quite frankly, yet, but getting closer to a sort of equal footing when it comes to female and male pro wrestlers. I think there's still a big disparity in terms of pay and in terms of amount of uh, bodies on the roster and in terms of the amount of people under contract, etc. There's been substantial improvement over the years, but they're not quite there just yet. In 2021, is labeling your female pro wrestlers knockouts, is that really the right thing? And I'm not sure, I'm not sure that it is. And obviously, as I mentioned, knockout, to me it does have a connotation in terms of appearance and beauty. Yes, you can talk about the combat sports nature and various definitions of the word knockout, and that is true. But I think going back to its original inception, you must say, you must say that one, Impact Wrestling used that term to have a, something similar to WWE, but they also use that term to have a context of beauty to it. And I think all of these years later, is that really 
what Impact want to be presenting in 2021, I don't know. I'm not sure. And don't get me wrong. I understand trying to be different and I understand trying to differentiate yourself from the pack. Diana Perazzo mentioned it in the interview that she did. She likes that it's not called a women's division. She likes that she's not just a female pro wrestler. She's a knockout. I understand that. But eventually... Eventually, I think things do have to change. And look, don't get me wrong. When when the Knockouts Division was first founded, it was chalk and cheese in comparison to the Divas Division in WWE. I'm not saying just because WWE decided the Impact Wrestling wanted to to copy or at least have a, a take on WWE's Women's Division. Uh, I'm not saying that it was exactly like that because it wasn't. When the Knockouts Division was first founded way back when, it was way more about wrestling, and it's always been more about wrestling than WWE was in terms of their women's division way back when WWE's women's division was more about bikini contests and pillow fights and bra and panties matches now uh, it's more about pro wrestling and the stories in the ring uh, when it comes to impact wrestling it's always been about pro wrestling really yes people have gimmicks and some people might have more edgy gimmicks than others the beautiful people etc but fundamentally the knockouts division was always about pro wrestling and it's always been about having great matches and having great performers and that's always been a credit to the Knockouts Division. That's the reason why today, arguably, it's the best women's division in the world. So the Knockouts Division has always been different from many other female pro wrestling divisions in comparison to other major pro wrestling companies because um, it's always been about pro wrestling and they've always had some of the biggest and best female pro wrestlers in that company. Nevertheless, as I mentioned, the name, the Knockouts Division, does have a slight... I don't want to say negative connotation, but certainly a connotation which maybe people don't want to talk about in 2021. The Knockouts division was completely different to WWE's Divas division, but obviously it's it's a difficult it's a difficult subject to talk about, and this is why I wanted to talk about it in the video here because. Obviously, you could see some criticisms of people saying they should stop using the knockouts term. You could say, well, you're just being woke. You're just trying to find faults in everything, right? It's PC culture in 2021. It's political correctness gone mad. Why are you trying to change everything? Why are you trying to change anything? Why are you trying to find faults in things? Why are you trying to find negative connotations in things that are not there? And I understand that period of thought and I understand that path of thought there because there is a certain element of that in when people try and find faults in things, especially things that were historic, especially things that happened a long time ago. And looking at them from a modern day viewpoint, you can obviously find faults in things. But the Knockouts division is still a thing in 2021. The Knockouts name is still a thing in 2021. And things do evolve. I think you have to realize that in pro wrestling, but also just as a society, you know, language evolves, society evolves. What is and isn't acceptable and offensive does evolve with that too. And things over time do get more strict in terms of what you can and can't say, but also things get more loose with what you can and can't say over time. That's just the way that as a society and as, I don't, I don't know, just as history evolves, that's the way the world works. Things change over time. What was acceptable 20 years ago certainly might not be acceptable today in 2021, but also what wasn't acceptable 20 years ago might be acceptable now. I think people, when they look at the evolution of language and of society over time, people always like to talk about the PC culture, don't they, and say that things, now you're trying to ban everything, you're trying to exclude everything, but also you do have to think about the other side of it, that things that weren't acceptable 20 years ago and, and language that wasn't acceptable 20 years ago now is acceptable now too. So do I think Impact Wrestling will change the Knockouts name and branding anytime soon? No, I don't think so. I don't think the Knockouts division in terms of its name or anything like that will change anytime soon. I think you have to look at only a couple of weeks time. We've got Hard to Kill, uh, the latest pay-per-view for Impact Wrestling. And at Hard to Kill, the Knockouts tag team titles are returning. They're being called the Knockouts tag team titles. They're a fundamental piece of the broadcast and Impact Wrestling tonight on Access TV, but also going forward. So the Knockouts name isn't going to change anytime soon. But... And I, I, and again, I understand there is a degree of identity to the name and the knockouts term used in the division. And Diana says that she finds it empowering. So at the moment, it's not a massive issue. But I think like most things, this will be a talking point that does evolve over time. And I think eventually sometime down the road, I do think the name will probably change. Why? Because things change and things do change and evolve over time. And you have to look at where the name initially came from and its roots and its origins. And its origins, when it comes to the Knockouts name, as I mentioned, was to be a competitor to the WWE Women's Division. It was meant to be a comparison to the WWE's Women's Division, but better, the Divas Division at the time. And as I mentioned, the term Knockout does have some connotation to beauty and looks. And obviously, when it comes to female performers, is that what they're judged on? No, they're judged on their ability in the ring, their ability 
ability to perform, their ability to uh, draw fans into the arena and have great matches and tell stories ultimately. And that shouldn't have anything to do with the looks. So I do think eventually it will change. Over time, I, I, again, this will be a long period of time. I don't see the knockouts branding or name changing in gosh, at least the next two, three years. Something may be down the line, but who knows? It's certainly an interesting topic, and that's why I wanted to bring it up today. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Impact Wrestling potentially changing the knockout brand in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Really interested in this one. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So Get involved in the community below, drop a comment, all opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. It really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to WrestleNews 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.